Hey, all my Virgo friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your April 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Virgo, I'm talking about Virgo rising, and I'm basing the house system when I talk about what house the activity is happening in based on Virgo rising. This is also applicable to Virgo moons, Virgo sun, as well as if you have three or more personal planets in the sign of Virgo, this video would be applicable to you. And these are based on the Pacific time zone. So if you are somewhere else in the world, please adjust for your location. The month starts off with your ruling planet going retrograde in the sign of Aries. Aries is your eighth house. So what we're seeing here on the first in the afternoon is Mercury and Mercury is about to revisit conversations with Eris. Eris is a point in the chart. Uh, she's uh, akin to Mars's little sister. She's uh, a bit aggressive. She fights for what she believes in. She stands up for herself and, and she fights for the underdog from my perception. That's how I view it. Then we have Chiron. Chiron, each one of us has Chiron in our chart. It's a point that indicates our wound. And as that wound is transformed, it turns into a gift, a very valuable gift. And here we're talking about your eighth house of transformation. Uh, so this is really key here. We have the North Node, which is a point that we have not experienced, that the soul is ravenous for in many ways. And it Mercury is going to end up uh, conjunct the North node as it stations before going direct again. So this is going to be very um, intense time for reflection of wounds and wants and how I want to express myself. We have Venus over here getting into a tight conversation with Neptune in Pluto um, and in Pisces. And this is all, while all these things are happening simultaneously, this feels like the theme of what's happening in the Mercury retrograde. How do I assert? How do I perceive myself? How do I think about myself? How do I speak about myself and my true wants and desires as an individual? And where have I, um, where is my soul's yearning for expression? You know, we could think of Neptune as as representing the other side, spirit, you know, also emotion. It's obviously water. And then Venus is our self-worth, our skills, our talents. It's also our um, personal history. And while all this is taking place, we see Jupiter and Uranus getting closer and closer together. And they're hovering around three degrees apart. And there's a weird kind of uh, interesting energy for me because that three is a very powerful number of the Trinity. So as they, you know, move through the month of April and, and become exact twice, they are literally here so close together that they can smell each other's breath. That's the way I want to put it. So here your liberation, lightning ideas, in many ways, we think of Uranus as the higher octave of Mercury. So there's genius here. And here's the opportunity for expansion using your own skills, you know, really allowing yourself to mentally, emotionally, and physically move closer and closer to your own sense of how your life's journey will feel satisfying and fulfilling to you. I don't even know necessarily that it has to be um, birthing a, a business. Many of us don't want that, or many people have, are entered different chapters of life. So when we look at, at what's really the focus in your, in your April for Virgo is Pisces is your seventh house, Aries is your eighth house, Taurus is your ninth house. Pisces is your house of personal peace and diplomacy, as well as partnerships, contractual partnerships, professional and personal. It is a, it is a house where we interact with others and we see uh, the flow and the contrast of, of that interaction and how we 
use our power because uh, we take that power into the eighth house and your eighth house is Aries. So this is about being brave, about looking at what it is that you want, digging into a deeper psychological uh, imprint potentially, and then allowing your philosophies to shift and change as Taurus is your ninth house of foreign travel, foreign people, philosophies, higher education. You may find yourself transforming into a place where you want to pursue you know, uh, a, a new career that's kind of Jupiterian or education, just for the sake of it, you could find yourself expanding, you know, your, I kind of want to put even your spiritual religious views because Jupiter rules religion and, and organizations like that where groups come together and, and form a common bond. You also might want to travel and see foreign lands. You know, this is, uh, um, Uranus also rules aviation and lightning. And here we see foreign travel. So there is a good possibility that there could some be something that transpires that allows you an opportunity to expand literally and figuratively in, in a foreign way. Let's go on to the fifth where we're going to see, oops, excuse me. I'm going to put this at 12 PM and then move over to the fifth. Here we see Venus has entered Aries. And it's kind of funny because the way that I see it, the, the focus on the planets is, again, the, here's Pisces where she's exalted. She's a welcome guest. And then she kind of gets into Aries and the whole energy changes and she's almost villainized for her dreams, her desires, for her assertiveness towards what she wants. And yet that's a very old way of looking at the feminine. Now I think this is about being brave as we're going to go over these very karmic energies about reframing the feminine from an actual gender to an energy. And here's your ruling planet. You know, it's it, it always takes a little while for the planet to get its motion, whether it's moving forward or back. So we call these the shadow periods. Um so here, Mercury's pretty much still in shadow. It has not gotten a lot of uh, movement yet, retrograde. And the conversation, closest conversation is Eris. What do I stand for? What do I want, et cetera? And now we're going to go into these other energies. So as Venus moves towards that, we're having this kind of a summit of Am I willing to pioneer into a new area? Am I willing to assert myself? Am I willing to look at my belief system and allow it to evolve? You know, I'm not too old to go get my master's degree. I don't have too many obligations. Self-care is important. Um, you know, these kind of conversations, because this is really up here in your ninth house offers bounty. Jupiter, uh, while it's rules Sagittarius, it it is the Lord of the ninth house. So there's a kind of this... Uh, extra oomph for you, Virgo, as you experience um, that Taurus energy there. Like extra oomph to make money, extra oomph to, uh, it's a good oomph. That's the way I, I want to phrase it. We have um, coming up next is our second eclipse of the season. The first was in March on the 25th in Libra. And now we're going to see a new moon solar eclipse. It's at 11.20 a.m. Pacific time. And this is in Aries, where we really are planting the seeds for the self. And Aries is all a very active sign. It's, you know, ruled by Mars. So this could even see you endeavoring some sort of physical experience, activity, you know, uh, it doesn't always have to be money related. Oftentimes, the way that I'm looking at this for you, Virgo, is it's really about you. It's almost like, you know, when they say when you play golf, you're really playing against yourself and, and your mind. Um, I feel like this period of time for you is exactly that, where this is a game about you and your belief system. And how am I going to open up and let that all blossom and 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 grow? We see Mars and um, Saturn are having you know, this summit of conversation in your seventh house, you know, reviewing history, reviewing where the fears are, where the restrictions are, you know, Mars in P Pisces is traditionally not thought of as a, a strong energy, but to me, you know, Mars is almost 5 billion year old planet for foreign change. 
And, you know, he's learned a thing or two, especially recently as it was going through your sister's sign, Gemini. And I, I just kind of feel like here we're looking at a peaceful warrior, spiritual warrior, somebody who is is standing, you know, in a hero's energy for a bigger ideal. And that ideal can be anything from a, a, literally a spiritual ideal to a birthing of, of something. And here we, we're talking about your seventh, eighth and ninth house. And so there it's like you could birth a professional relationship that transforms your money and you're making money for yourself. And it's making you feel so much more secure about moving forward because these planets will, as the subsequent months happen, they'll all move over into the, these other houses and they'll have uh, their conversations there. But this conjunction will not be happening again for, I don't even know how long. It's only happened three times in Taurus since the year 1181. And if you haven't seen my video on the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, um, there's one in the, in, um, I produced one. So go look for that. All right, let's jump over to, and, and let me do one other thing real quick. I'm sorry. When it comes to a new moon solar eclipse, it's literally an opportunity, a faded opportunity to make a choice to plant some ideas that will foster a sense of peace and harmony and transform any wound into a tool that sharpens your intention. We have 19 degrees here in this conjunction of the new moon and Chiron. So you're planting seeds for that reward from Chiron, from the wisdom to be extracted. And that wisdom is what gives sense and allows what feels like a release, but it's actually an integration. And even though Jupiter is not really having a conversation with them, it is at 19 degrees at well as well, which makes me think this Libra energy, 19 degrees, is paramount and, and most important. How do I foster balance through my thoughts, through my speech, through the, the almost the hamster wheel of your mind? Oh, the monkey mind. You know, any awareness of it gives you an opportunity to just have that awareness, which instantly shifts the energy doesn't change it right away, but it starts to slow it down just the way we see Mercury, you know, barely after eight days of, of being in retrograde, it's only gone two degrees and it's still in this very tight conversation with Eris, a point that represents standing up for the self and what you want. And here we see in your seventh house, brave action, you know, creating structure, having endurance, having the ambition to endure the unsuredness as you plant the seeds in the darkness. So this is super powerful, I think. When we get to um, the, uh, let's go to the 18th now. I'm going to jump a little bit here. at 12 p.m. Okay. I, I jumped over here rather than going through each each degree because it's an it's an increasing energy. You know, we still we know Mars has now gone from being uh, moving towards Saturn. They've summited and now Mars is heading on its way over to Neptune. This is how I am reconciling my ancestry, my soul's imprint. I'm finding the div divinity and the disruptions that I have experienced, and I'm willing to be brave in my own transformation. It's kind of like saying, I don't like what I, what I felt, how I felt, but I'm willing now not to release it, not to let it go, but to rather focus on the self on what do I actually want for myself? This is your eighth house of transformation and other people's money. You could be an entrepreneur and endeavor something that brings in more resources and resources doesn't necessarily have to be money. It can be other things that you require. And we see the North Node, Venus and Mercury still retrograde in a very tight conversation. The North Node is a point where I'm ravenous to experience you know, something I haven't experienced and in the sign of Aries, it's myself stretching my physical body. What can I do with myself? This is where we find, you know, extreme athletes and, and competitors, not just warriors, excuse me. <clears throat> we see also heroes here. We see people who can run into emergency situations and, 
and somehow have the instinct to, to, or have the wherewithal to let instinct drive the bus instead of try to think it through. So for my Virgos here, Venus is going to represent money. She's going to re represent your skills. She's going to represent your own sense of comfort. And, and here's Mercury, just like, let's have more talk about this. What do we want for ourselves? Your ruling planet. And we have Chiron here. Again, this is the opportunity for the transformation. It's like the awareness, instead of trying to fix an issue, how do I assert myself in a new direction that I want to be in that then helps put enough distance between me and whatever happened in the past to give it meaning? Because as Mars moves closer and closer to Neptune, I feel like there's a spiritual warrior coming here, epiphany, uh, a, a different way of, of perceiving the, the pitfalls or even the challenges I'm experiencing in the outside world. And while all this is transpiring, we have our first exact conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus. Now, uh, I just kind of want to reiterate that Jupiter, um, Uranus rules aviation, it rules air travel, so does Jupiter. It rules um, it rules scientific experiments and innovations and renovations and and forward thinking. You know, it's it's very um, broad in the in it focuses on the collective. So we have a really broad between Jupiter's broadness and Uranus's broadness, there is a huge energy of looking to the future and almost trampling over the everyday things that get in the way of that. That would be the Taurus energy of being stuck in some sort of, uh, you know, sort of, how do I want to phrase it? I'm a Taurus moon. It's not the routine of my everyday life. It's the routine of my everyday emotional body and how my thoughts up here are focused in on what I think I should do, I need to do, I have to do versus what I get to do, want to do, and love to do. And so I think this is going to be such a powerful time, not just in the exactness of the conjunctions, but in the ramp up of, of it as well. All right, let's go on to the next day, we will see the sun enter Taurus. And as we do that, um, the, the, the energy shifts a bit. Like here, I feel like, because the sun is exalted in Aries, it's a, a welcomed guest. It's in super, you know, they pull out the fine china. Everything is, you know, spitty, spottedy. And, you know, it's just a really good energy for the sun to be in. But as it moves into Taurus, it starts to shine a light on my skills, on my talents, on my wants, my desires, on my trepidations about them? Uh, do I somehow find myself going into a routine where I'm sort of making progress, but I'm really allowing myself to sort of lag back in, in the deeper truths of what I want to experience? And I want to offer it this way because the sun rules Leo and Leo rules fun. And we go from, you know, technically Leo is your 12th house Virgo. So, you know, your fun can be unseen or invisible, or it could be, if you like, you know, you could enjoy naps and meditating and going to spas. But I think what this is about is your emotional needs. The theme of this month is what do I think about myself? What do I want for myself? How do I use my talents to move my happy heart forward? That's what I think is going on now. The next thing we have is the 23rd. We're going to have a full moon um, at 4.48 p.m. in Scorpio. And Scorpio rules our, our other people's money. It rules um, death, taxes, uh, stockbrokers, financial money movers, uh, funeral homes, morticians, surgeons, psychologists, occult people. It is a vast house. And when we just take the transformational death and rebirth off of it, it's a real opportunity to uh, have an, to see how you can use your vision and engage people's resources. But instead of you fostering their version of their happiness, AKA you're an employee, they're an employer, 
it, somehow the role is reversed in some way or your perception of it, or there's an epiphany about it and an opportunity on how to, I guess I want to say parlay your skills and your talents. It could even be a side hustle, like an Etsy account, who knows, or something like that. We see at this full moon that in the full moon is a cycle where it's the brightest phase of the moon where something is illuminated. And while we call it an ending, it's really an illumination of the next step. And this is at the fourth degree, which is creating something for the home. Uh, it's a Cancerian energy. Uh, it's a Scorpio moon, uh, trusting your intuitive body versus your mercurial mind that is now almost conjunct and reaching the end of its retrograde, the North Node, ravenous to, to transform it something for myself, something that stretches me as a soul walking through a physical experience. It's super, super powerful. And we see Venus is right up against Eris. And Eris is like encouraging Venus as she goes into her domicile in a few days to take advantage of, stand up for yourself, take advantage of your talents. You got this. And as a Virgo, Taurus is your fifth house, right? Yeah. So you're good. No, Taurus is your ninth house. Capricorn is your fifth house. Yes. And so what the reason I say this is because there's something about potentially putting structure into perceived playtime and enjoyment that opens up another avenue for material resources to come in. So it doesn't feel arduous. It feels more Piscean and creative. That's the way I want to put it. Sorry when I mixed myself up. I've been doing too many videos. Okay. So this full moon is real powerful. Then we go to the 25th. And this is where we see the second conjunction exact with Jupiter and Uranus. So basically we're feeling an exact conjunction for most of April. I mean, anything within three degrees between these two expansive planets is going to be felt way, way, way back in March, but this is, this is inflamed. And here, this is very transformational Capricorn degree. It can be a challenging degree. It is, you know, been phrased the kill or be killed, but it could, what it could be doing is killing an old story and renovating a new story. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical. Um, I think that this is a, a, an epiphany. And what we've seen is as uh, Jupiter moved over Uranus. It went to the 22nd degree. Uranus was just at, at, stayed at 21. And then Uranus moved and stepped into Jupiter's energy. You can kind of see it by the minutes right here. This happened at 22 degrees, five minutes. This happened at 22 degrees, 54 minutes. So my point is that there is a, now... Uranus is pushing for the to move into a foreign place, to move into new energy, to use your skills, to broaden. You know, Jupiter can rule not only foreign travel, it can rule dealing with foreign people in a business capacity, tourism, uh, travel in a way that is different than you've ever done before. So it could be where you always travel on the ground and now you're traveling to even more exotic places in 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 helicopters. Say that. And we also see at the time of this conjunction, this continued conversation over here between Eris, encouraging Venus to use your skills. You know, you're about to step into your homeland and be prepared to really own it. That's what she's wanting her to do. We see a growing conjunction between uh, uh, Mars and and Neptune, you know, offering this opportunity to like really sort of have the, even there's, even though there's an awareness of an old pattern and how I show up in partnerships and how I show up um, with other people and how I've made my money traditionally, Virgo, Leo is your, I'm sorry, Libra is your second house. That's traditionally the Taurus house where all this is happening. So my point is brave, brave night here, night of the round table and your ruling planet has moved forward, but it's still conjunct the North Node. This is a continued conversation about what you want and about, and it could in some ways start with anger and frustration. I don't want to ignore the more challenging sides of, Air, of Aries and Mars, 
So as you review what's made you angry, review what's held you back, review what's, you know, felt like a chronic um, thorn in your side, you, this is, this conversation between Eris and Venus is offering you an opportunity to push up on the box a little bit and, in, and enjoy it. Okay. Let's go now to, let's go to the 28th. This is where we're going to see um, over these next three days, we're going to feel a change in energy because not only do we have the lingering, continuing lingering effects of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in the sign of money, we could see something very big on a, on a world stage or even within your own countries. But now what we're going to see is first we start on the 28th with this exact conjunction of Mars with Neptune. Here, I really believe that there is a potential for Mars to be aware of the spiritual divinity within because of the conversations that have been going on about potential anger, frustrations, and resentments. And now, you know, Neptune is offering and Saturn has offered wisdom about that how history and time sometimes propels us into places we would not have gone within our youth and in our prime of our physical life. So Mars, as it's entering its rulership and has this very spiritual conversation, is in no time going to be conjunct that North Node, conjunct Chiron, conjunct Eris, and then we'll continue to follow Venus and Mercury, or Mercury will follow them at that point. But Anyway, so this is a continued conversation that's really offering a whole new world for you, but there's bravery required. We go into the 29th and we see Venus has entered her rulership. And then when we go on the 30th, we see that Mars has entered his rulership. So this is very powerful. You know, they're in their highest vibration here. And here, this is where the summit you know, has been concluded. Uh, the evaluation has been done. There has been an action plan made uh, that starts emotionally and then is inspired into physical action. And then we really start to see and feel uh, the transformations that are possible. And that's very exciting. Um, again, this conjunction here is not just a day. It's even not even just a month. It's something that's going to have long lasting effects. Uh, if you check out the video I did on, on the conjunction, you'll find that it, each time they met in Taurus, there was something substantial about uh, the way the world ran that changed. Uh, we saw the Knights Templars implement a financial system that crossed the globe. We saw the first speech from Abraham Lincoln about the ethics and integrity of slavery to his uh, house of the Senate of his state, Illinois. And then in 1941, we saw Pearl Harbor, an unexpected aerial attack. We can't forget that Uranus rules rebellion and libertarian energies and Taurus rules the land. So we could see some interesting things on a world stage as well. But those don't help us focus in on the things we need to do over here in our self energy. So, all right, my Virgos, thank you so much for listening. Uh, please like, please subscribe, please share. If you'd like to book a reading with me, either an intuitive reading or an astrology reading, I'm available. My information is below in the description. Just reach out and I'll send you all the particulars. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the merry month of May. Have a lovely April.